Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about small vessel vasculitis, specifically focusing on anchor associated vasculitis. Now, vasculitis is inflammation of the blood vessel, resulting in damaged vessels, leading to potential complications such as tissue ischemia and even aneurysms. Primary vasculitides are classified into the size of the blood vessel affected, large vessel vasculitis, medium vessel vasculitis, and small vessel vasculitis. Small vessel vasculitis typically affects the small arterioles and the capillaries. The small vessel vasculitis can be further divided into anchor-associated vasculitis and immune complex-mediated vasculitis. Anchor-associated vasculitis is so called this because in the person's blood, there is presence of anchor, which is an abbreviation to anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody. Anchor-associated vasculitis usually tends to affect small and also medium-sized vessels. There are three main types of anchor. Microscopic polyangitis, granulomatosis with polyangitis, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis. The pathophysiology of anchor-associated vasculitis involves presence of anchor and also granulomatosis. Anchor targets certain proteins in the cytoplasmic granules of neutrophils and monocytes. The neutrophils, for example, contain enzymes, myeloperoxidase and proteinase 3. Uh, in granules. Now, what is thought to happen is that during inflammation, cytokines such as TNF-alpha and interleukin-1 stimulates the translocation of proteinase 3 and myeloperoxidase to the cell membranes, allowing these enzymes to be exposed. ANCA, the actual antibodies, are produced by plasma cells through an unknown cause, possibly infection initially. The steps involved would be something like antigen presenting cells will activate the naive T cells, which reside in uh, lymphoid tissue such as lymph nodes. Now, the naive T cells are actually the T helper cell and their activation relies on interleukin 2. The naive T helper cells will stimulate other T cell subtypes, the T helper 2 cells. Now, T helper 2 cells are known to stimulate the humoral immune response, that is the antibody-mediated immune response. Therefore, here, the T helper 2 cells will activate B cells to become plasma cells. Plasma cells produce ANCA, anti-neutrophil cytoplasmic antibody, and ANCA will target certain proteins in the cytoplasmic granules of the neutrophils and monocytes, as I mentioned. Now, there are two types of ANCA. There are cytoplasmic ANCA and perinuclear ANCA. Cytoplasmic ANCA, C ANCA, targets proteinase 3. Perinuclear ANCA, P ANCA, mainly targets the enzyme myeloperoxidase. Normally, ANCA are unable to bind to these antigens because proteinase 3 and myeloperoxidase reside in the granules of the neutrophils and monocytes. But what is thought to happen is that during inflammation, you know, cytokines such as TNF-alpha and interleukin-1 stimulates the translocation, basically the expression and release of these enzymes, proteinase 3 and myeloperoxidase, to the cell membrane, allowing these antigens to interact with the circulating ANCA. Here's a diagram depicting the layers of the blood vessel, the top being the endothelium lining the inside of the vessel. Now the interaction between ANCA and these enzymes, these antigens, will stimulate or will cause three main things. The first is endothelial attachment of neutrophils through activation of the neutrophils, allowing infiltration to the vessel layer. Two. The neutrophils will then degranulate, will release reactive oxygen species causing damage uh, and further inflammation to the surrounding area, to the blood vessels. Number three, the neutrophils will also release more pro-inflammatory cytokines, promoting the inflammatory response. Remember, the pathophysiology of ANCA-associated vasculitis involves the presence of ANCA, the antibodies, 
and also granulomatosis. So granulomatosis is mediated by T helper cells, also known as CD4 T cells. Specifically, during flare-ups, there are more T helper cells than there are monocytes. T helper activation relies on cytokines to drive the differentiation process. Interleukin-4 encourages T helper 2 cell activation, and so the humoral immune response, whereas interleukin-12 and interferon gamma encourages T helper 1 activation. Now, interleukin-12 and interferon gamma is seen in acute flare-ups of ANCA-associated vasculitis, which means that T helper cells become T helper 1 cells. T helper 1 cells function to promote the cell-mediated immune response. Now, the cell-mediated immune response means activation of monocytes and macrophages. Another important cell which does not play as big of a role as uh, CD4 T cells are the CD8 T cells. Now, the CD8 T cells also rely on activation by antigen-presenting cells, but also rely on the T helper uh, cell activation. Now, these monocytes, these macrophages, and all these other immune cells which are activated will be recruited to the vessel area to where the inflammation is going on, and they will form the granuloma. It is a T cell mediated granulomatosis. However, keep in mind that in one type of ANCA associated vasculitis, eosinophils play a big role eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis. Certain pro-inflammatory cytokines promote granuloma formation. Now, activation of endothelial cells also play a key role in the pathophysiology of ANCA-associated vasculitis. Activated endothelial cells, which are the cells that line the inner part of the blood vessel, express receptors for immune cells to attach onto. They also release chemokines such as interleukin-8 and other cytokines which encourages immune cell infiltration. This in turn will cause um, uh, inflammation of the blood vessel, hence vasculitis. The cycle continues. An acute flare-up will cause activation of many immune cells releasing pro-inflammatory cytokines. This release of pro-inflammatory cytokines such as interleukin-1 and TNF-alpha causes activation of neutrophils and expression of the antigens myeloperoxidase and proteinase 3. Thus, in summary, ANCA-associated vasculitis pathophysiology involves an initial trigger possibly an infection, you have B cell activation and thus ANCA production, the antibodies, and then you have T cell mediated granulomatosis as well as possibly eosinophilic in certain type of ANCA associated vasculitis, and three, you have activation of endothelial cells of the vessel promoting vasculitis. It is thus important to suppress the immune system to slow down and put a halt on this cycle. Treatment of anchor associated vasculitis involves an induction where active disease is put into remission, followed by maintenance. Induction involves glucocorticoids and cyclophosphamide. Now, glucocorticoids work in a few ways. One way glucocorticoids work is by inhibiting transcription factors involved in the production synthesis of TNF-alpha and interleukin-1, and this will obviously suppress inflammation. Glucocorticoids also inhibit transcription factors and gene expression involved in the production of interleukin-2, thereby suppressing T-cell uh, activity. Cyclophosphamide is an alkylating agent known for its role in chemotherapy. In vasculitis, it works essentially by suppressing the immune system, specifically the lymphocytes, which are the T-cells and the B-cells. Rituximab is a synthesized antibody, a monoclonal antibody, against the surface protein CD20 on B cells. By binding onto CD20, rituximab mediates B cell breakdown and so reduces antibody production. For maintenance, methotrexate and azathioprine, and most recently, rituximab can be used.
Now that we have a bit of an idea about the pathophysiology behind anchor associated vasculitis, we can now learn about the three types of anchor associated vasculitis in more detail. Microscopic polyangitis, granulomatosis with polyangitis, eosinophilic granulomatosis with polyangitis.